Hello, my friends. In the last video, a few of you asked me how to construct a 40 degree angle with ruler and compass. This is essentially an angle trisection problem. So today I've prepared a special topic on it. This is Red Peak. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. The question on angle trisection can be traced back to ancient Greeks. Given an arbitrary angle, we are asked to trisect it with unmarked straight edge and compass. This question has puzzled mathematicians for a very long time, and it is until 1837 that Pierre Wanzo provides a clear answer to it. He shows that it is impossible to trisect an arbitrary angle with unmarked straight edge and compass. There are two keywords in this statement. The first one is the word arbitrary, which means we are looking for a general method that is applicable to any angle. In contrast, there might be some ways to perform angle trisection for some very special angles. For instance, we all know that 30 degree angle is constructible, which serves as trisection of the 90 degree angle. But this is really not interesting, because even removing a tiny tiny angle from 90 degree, we no longer know how to trisect it. So what we are looking for is a universal method to trisect angles, and unfortunately, this is not possible. The other keyword I have highlighted is the word unmarked. The restriction on the negative result is to only use unmarked straight edge. However, I will be really surprised if your ruler does not have scale on it. So now the natural question is to ask whether we can overcome this problem with scales on the ruler. And the answer is yes, we can. So I'm going to show you a construction of angle trisection given by Archimedes. Given an angle with vertex O, we first locate the point A, one scale away from O. Then we extend the line OA with our ruler and draw the circle with center O, radius OA, intersecting the other side at the point B. Now we lay down the ruler such that it passes through the point B, and its first marker lies on the line OA. Let's call this point P. Now we are going to slide the ruler such that P moves along the line OA, and at the same time, the point B lies on the other end. So here is an animation of how to slide the ruler. The point P always lies on OA, and the ruler always pass through the point B. And we stop when the second marker hits circle. We claim that the angle QPO is one third of the angle beta. Indeed, by construction, we have PQ equals to OQ equals to OB, which gives us two isosceles triangles. Easy angle tracing shows us the beta is three times alpha. So finally, we only need to draw the parallel line for O in order to trisect the original angle. Voila, that's it. Quite simple, right? So it all looks good in theory. Let me do a demo myself to show how to do it in practice. In this demo, I'm going to trisect a 60 degree angle. So I start drawing the 60 degree angle with ruler and compass. We draw a circle with center O 
and use the same radius to draw another circle at the point A. Their intersection gives us the point B and the angle AOB is 60 degree. Now I use the scales on my ruler to match O and A. We see that the scale 1 matches the point O and scale 3 matches the point A. Next, we are going to slide the ruler such that B lies on one end and the scale 1 lies on the 9 O A. Well, this is kind of tricky, but never mind. We adjust the ruler such that the scale 3 is on the circle. And we draw this line by theory give us the 20 degree angle. To double check, let me use a projector. We see that it is pretty close to 20 degree. So it really works. To summarize, we see that using a marked ruler solves the problem. Even though the sliding ruler is not really constructible, in the sense that we can never stop exactly at the intersection. But still, this provides us a practical way to approximate a trisection. Now you may wonder how we prove the negative result on unmarked straight edge. To share some insight on it, we are going to show you a geometric interpretation given by Terence Tao on his blog. To understand what is not possible, we need to dive deep into what is constructible. We know that angle bisection is doable, so let's start with it. Given an angle BAC, we bisect it as following. We draw the circle with center A, radius AB, intersecting AC at point D. Then we draw the circle of the same radius at the point D and B, respectively. Now we denote E as their intersection, and the quadrilateral ADEB is a diamond. So the 9AE bisect the angle BAC. Next, we allow the point C to be a moving point. More precisely, we fix A and B and let C moving on the circle. When C is moving, both the point D and E is moving as well. Now if C completes a full round angle, then D and E are back to their starting positions. In this case, we say that this construction is one periodic where the number 1 refers to the number of turns in round angles. Now let's move on and check what happens if we quadrisect the angle. The construction is really the same. We bisect the angle that bisect the angle BAC. So we draw a circle, the green one, intersect the yellow circle forming a diamond at the point G. And the line AG quadrisect the angle BAC. Now we are going to move C. After a round turn, we see that the point G only moves half turn. So in this case, we need another round turn for the point G to go back to its starting position. Therefore, quadrisection is too periodic. As you can see, we can go further. If we perform octa section, it is four periodic, as shown in this animation. The major claim is that any straight edge and compass construction is periodic with period equals to a power of 2. The high-level intuition is that 
we are only allowed to draw circles and lines. A circle is a degree 2 algebraic curve. And the intersection between two circles, or a circle with a line, have two solutions. So by some sort of induction, the period must be a power of 2. To make the argument rigorous, we will need some algebraic tools, which I will omit here. With this in hand, the conclusion is quite straightforward. If trisection is possible, then it is free periodic, which is clearly not a power of 2. So this gives us a contradiction. For more details, please check out Terence Tao's blog. I have shared the link in the video description below. The underlying concept of this proof is related to Galois theory, which is not trivial at all. That's why this simple problem has been open for thousands of years, which is quite amazing. I hope you have enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye-bye.